today is June 9th. Um, I want to talk today about some things that I saw while I was praying in the spirit. I want to start this off by saying the prayers of the righteous are powerful and they're effective. Um, and just like we are to worship in spirit and in truth, we're also not only to pray without ceasing, but pray in the spirit. Now, praying in the spirit is not just praying in tongues. Praying in the spirit is praying with your words and your mind at the same time. So as I was starting off by praying in tongues, I saw Putin's face. I saw him smiling. I saw him shaking hands with a man in a Chinese uniform. Then I saw the Chinese military. They were all standing in line in a formation as it looked like orders were be being given. And they were indi individually getting into these fighter jets or planes. I saw the word New York. And then I saw, again, the Statue of Liberty. It just keeps um, being emphasized for whatever reason. I saw the Statue of Liberty. And it was turning to dust little by little. It was just blowing away. And I saw the whole state of Florida sinking, just sinking into the ocean until it was almost fully submerged underwater. I saw California on the map, and California had this crack. I've seen this before, this crack um, that kind of went through the middle. But this time, um, it looked like a piece of, of the land was almost like breaking off and falling into the ocean. So while I was praying, I was thinking um, specifically LGTBQ. And I saw a pile of rainbow flags. There were just like individuals throwing their flags onto this pile. And then it was burning. And I saw a banner that said, love is love. And it was going up in flames. There were like holes that had been burnt through the banner. I saw multitudes of children coming out of houses and they looked, they looked dirty. They looked unkempt. They were coming out of houses and buildings. Um, they definitely looked like they had been uh, neglected, malnourished, poorly taken care of. And then I saw all these men being led out of these houses, out of these buildings with their hands behind their backs in cuffs. I saw a line of children linked together in a row almost like slaves, and, and and it was Jesus, and I knew it was Jesus, going down the line, and he was turning the key in each lock to free them. I saw hypodermic needles being tossed into a pile that became this, like, enormous heap, and I saw drug paraphernalia being laid in piles down at the altar. As I was praying for the children, specifically the children at the border and specifically for the trafficking and slave labor of children. I saw the words, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Then I saw the word lost. And I saw people and they were handing in what looked like an armful of soiled and dirty clothes. And there was an exchange happening where they were being handed these clean white linens to put on. Then that verse, um, that Bible verse, came into um, my mind like a burning stick being snatched out of the fire. This is when um, Satan was, was standing there trying to accuse, and I cannot remember his name. I apologize. Satan was standing there trying to accuse him. And, and the Lord said, no, 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 this one's mine. I saw a man in a long brown robe similar to um, like a, a lowly shepherd pulling nooses off the necks of people who were stand, hanging or either standing on a step stool with a rope around their neck who were attempting to hang themselves. He was taking the noose off of their necks. I saw a bottle after bottle of alcohol being poured out by different hands, but I couldn't see their faces. I saw end cap displays in the library with the pride themes and the end caps were being knocked over. And then book by book was being thrown in a heap and burned. 
I saw a drag queen reading to a group of young kids sitting in a small circle and the whole foundation of the building started to shake. And then all this debris and rubble just started like falling from the ceiling. And I could tell it fell onto this person because all I saw next was a pile of rubble and these kids running away. And then that Bible verse came to mind. It said, woe to those who would cause one of these little ones to stumble. It would be better for them if a millstone were tied around their neck and they were cast into the sea. Again, the prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. In Job, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it's Job chapter 22, verse 30. It says that those who are not righteous can be saved by the cleanness of your hands simply by praying for them. There are some people that are listening to this right now, and the only reason why you are still alive, the only reason you are not consumed, the only reason why you are still breathing, the only reason why you made it out of the atrocities that happened to you throughout this life, the only reason you could is because somebody prayed for you. Somebody interceded for you. Now, that may have been a family member, but it might not. It might have been somebody that you didn't even know. Um, I do know this. I know that the Holy Spirit will actually put people on the hearts of people in the body. And we don't always have to know them. Sometimes he will give us a name. Sometimes he will put a person's face in front of us. And although we don't know them personally, we'll be woken up in the middle of the night and encouraged to pray for that person or pray for that person. And there'll almost be an urgency, like drop everything that you're doing and pray for this person right now. Uh, I would encourage you anytime that you ever feel that, that urgency, that tug on your heart that somebody needs prayer, that you would drop everything that you're doing. Again, just like we're to worship in spirit and in truth, we're not just praying with our words. We're praying for the changes that we want to see. We're getting down on our hands and knees. We're bowing before our Lord, our Creator, our Savior, our Redeemer, the great I am. We're bowing before him and we're praying for the changes that we want to see. So we need to envision the things that either we are heavy on our hearts, things that we want to see come to pass, or we need to actually pray, Lord, what do I need to pray today? What is on your heart? And he will tell you. He will tell you what needs prayer. Um, and then you just envision that, whether it be homeless communities, whether it be people with all types of addictions, strung out in crack houses and trap houses, you envision that. And I'm telling you right now that I believe wholeheartedly that when that prayer goes out, a prayer that's made in faith, right? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God, but a prayer that's made in faith, I believe that command goes out immediately. Immediately for God to start moving on that person's behalf. Now, I know many of you know that everything happens in the spiritual first before it hits the natural. So we can get impatient when we don't see God moving right away. But we have to remember that the command has already gone out. God is moving on your behalf. He heard your cries. He heard your pleas. He heard your suffering. He heard your woes. He is not deaf. He is not too busy to hear from you. He, he, he hasn't put you at the bottom of his list. You're not on a waiting list with God, okay? He heard you. He's moving. And you may not always like the ways or the methods that he moves in, but we don't have to agree with them. God is God. He doesn't need our approval, and he does not need our permission to do what he does. The Bible says that he will be merciful to who he will be merciful and compassion and show compassion to who he will show compassion. It doesn't mean he loves us any less. It just means that he knows better than us what we need what our spouses need, what our children need, what our family members need. I'm going to share something with you really quickly. 
the Lord has been doing this with me recently. He has been giving me a gentle rebuke, but stern enough to let me know that not everybody needs to be ministered to. See, the gospel is like fire shut up in my bones sometimes, and I, I can't contain it. I got to get it out. But the problem is that we still need discernment to know when somebody just needs you to listen. Somebody just needs you to care. Somebody just needs to, you to hear them out. Somebody just needs you to put your judgment in your pocket. Somebody just needs you to understand where they're coming from, to sympathize and empathize with what has brought them to the place where they are currently. Sometimes somebody just needs you to be present. Somebody just needs you to be present. Somebody just needs to know that you're there. And if they were to call, it, call on you at any time, day or night, that you would be there for them. Sometimes they don't need us to preach. We can plant those seeds, but if God is not forceful, why are we? The Lord does not force his will upon us, and we should never try to force our will on another. I've done damage to relationships this way, and I'm just being honest and transparent with you. I've done damage to relationships by trying to push my beliefs onto them because I understand that we are in the last days and, and the times are urgent. But even in these times, even knowing the days that we're in, the Lord has said to me, stop, stop, just love them, just care for them, just show them support. The seeds have been planted. You plant the seed, somebody else waters it. I am the one who makes things grow. God is the one who makes things grow. The Father is the one who draws hearts to him, souls to him. And so we have to relinquish control. But the easiest way for us to relinquish control of those people that we care about and we desperately want them to be saved and we desperately want them to be set free and we desperately want them to be healed and delivered is just to release them to God. And to understand that we were never in control to begin with. The Lord is in control. God is sovereign. We were never in control. So it will be easy for us to relinquish control today. And to hand that situation. That daughter, that son, that husband, that wife, that brother, that sister that stubborn coworker, whoever it is, to the Lord and say, show them the truth. Show them the truth. Make all their crooked places straight. Pull them out of darkness into your marvelous light. Tear the veil away. Draw them to you, Father. Show them who you truly are and not the misrepresentation that was placed in front of them early on. And what I mean by that is people that grew up in a Christian household that had no love. Would you want to serve that Jesus? Would you want anything to do with that Jesus? This is what I mean by empathizing and sympathizing with someone's situation before you just try to push the gospel down their throat. And yes, there are some people that need to be preached, the fires of hell, that need to be preached with an urgency, that need the fear of the Lord to drop in their lap. But this is where discernment comes in. The Lord will let you know who's who. He will let you know who needs gentle rebuke and correction and who needs to be shaken up, who needs to be awakened who needs to understand that they don't have much time. Um, again, I don't expect you to take my word for it. You can test the spirit 
but I'm just telling you that these are my personal interactions with the Lord. And this is his beauty and his grace and his glory in his fullness. He tells us great and mighty things, things to come that we do not know. But he also shows us not only that our prayer has been heard, but that he's moving heaven and earth to accomplish it. Amen.